All right, well, let's uh, focus in. It's the third Wednesday. It's Connect Group Night. What a great uh, time we have. What, I'm just blessed by my Connect Group, and I don't know about you. I think all of you are. And uh, before we start and get a few announcements underway, let's pray, because that's always the best thing to do, right? We should pray. The lesson tonight's on victory. And so we're going to pray for victory in our connect groups and in our lives, all right? Father, thank you. This is the day that you've made. We rejoice. We're glad in this day. Lord, we're glad because you are God. And Lord, we thank you for saving us, for adding uh, our names into your book, writing our names in your book. Lord, we thank you that we have eternal life through the Son who did the finished work, that work that was required, that work that uh, paid our penalty. Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless us tonight and give us victory in our lives. Give us victory in our connect groups. Give us victory in the kingdom as we build it for your name. And Lord, we just care for to give you all the praise and the glory tonight in the name of Jesus. All God's people said, amen. and amen. amen. Yes, I got to take over for a pastor here. I got to do amen and amen. Uh, just a few announcements. Does everybody know what this is? An invitation, right. Is, are you all handing them out? Okay, this is good. We want to invite 5,000 to our services beginning on the 29th, Palm Sunday. Uh, we have morning services, and then in the evening at 5 o'clock, we have the, uh, the, three, the three guys, the three amigos, the <laughs> A3MS, Acts Three Man Show. They're coming to do, uh, they're going to act out the book of Acts, okay? And uh, it's going to be wild it's gonna be great it's gonna be full of god okay so I want you to be inviting people how many people have a connect group between now and easter sunday how many have look at okay so this is my recommendation to you there are some flyers back there and they're elsewhere in the church grab a stack take them to your connect group encourage your people to take them with them to invite because i think a lot of times people leave the church They've got lunch or something else focused, and they walk right by, and they leave them there. And so if you give them to them, hand them to them, okay? So take a big stack with you and hand them to them and encourage them to invite, and we'll get 5,000 invites out and watch God do great things in the Easter season, right? That's one announcement. i got to check so I don't leave anything out here. These things are great. Reminders. Okay. We want to reach 400 people in connect groups. That's one of Pastor Tim's goals uh, for this spring. And so please be inviting people, especially the unconnected people, like the people that don't go to a connect group. You can invite your neighbors. You can invite people you work with. You know, what a great way to, many times people are a little intimidated coming to church, but if you invite them to your home for a meal or, you know, a barbecue, and we just got some other people coming over, and we'll have a good time, they will come. And so invite them in and try to build your connect group. Go after people. Wear your shirts on the second Sunday, and just go ask, asking people to come. And they'll come to your groups, and pastor will reach his goal, and he'll be a happy camper. All right? And then the next thing is, I need to ask you if uh, things are not working. And anybody here having trouble in their connect group that you can share with us here? Maybe you need an answer to something, or uh, maybe there's just, you know, anybody struggling with anything? Lack of attendance, uh, you know, unfaithful people. <laughs> That's usually the one that, that gets to me. Anybody? Okay, how about testimonies for the good things God's doing in your group? Jenny. Uh, we had our connect group today, and we were just sitting around talking this morning about our connect group, and I'm amazed at God how he has connected us together as sisters in Christ. And one of the girls spoke up and said, this connect group, she, she said, I've been to several different connect groups, and she said, this connect group is connected. And I just, I, that really, Amen. So, Jeannie's got the testimony that the women in her group feel connected. Connected. That's what it's all about, right? 
connect with each other. And so that's a great testimony. Yeah, Shirley. So I'd like to add to that, we're in the same connect group. Um, what that connection has brought us is the answered prayer. We, we had prayer today, and before we even finished, the answer was, was on its way. I Amen. Thought. That's awesome, yeah. Jamie, uh, Shirley's daughter, she got saved. She got baptized recently. Yeah, the Lord's speaking to her. Amen. That's great. That's good stuff. From a connect group, right? God is doing things. Any other testimonies? Positive things the Lord's, you're seeing the Lord do in your group. What's working for you? What's the favorite part of your, of your group meeting? Don't say the food, okay? You could say the manna, right? The manna. The worship. Some people have worship in their groups. You know, that's great, especially if you have the musically uh, inclined people. You know, live music is great. Other people use CDs uh, and, and play it, and they just worship to CD, like even a Cornerstone CD or something like that. And so you can find ways to worship God. When we were in Egypt uh, several years ago, these people, they didn't have a, a single tone instrument. All they had was a percussion. And I'll tell you what, they worshiped the Lord with fervency and uh, urgency. And uh, they were just on fire for God. And it really spoke to my heart. I didn't know a thing that they were saying, but I knew they were praising God and I knew they were doing it with passion. And so you can find different ways to, to have worship if you want to do that. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll get to the lesson then. It's a, uh, we're staying on the theme of victory this month. And I entitled this Victory Through Faith. I just got one verse that the whole message is based upon, but then I got a whole bunch of other ones in there for you to chew on as well. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith. And so I want to review from last month, uh, Pastor's lesson, he had an acrostic and, uh, for victory, our buzzword at Cornerstone for 2015. So let's repeat them. When I say V, you repeat the answers right there in front of you. So, okay, there's no tricks. V is for? Vision. I is for? C is for? T is for? O? R? Why? Awesome, awesome. You'll have that memorized before the year's out. I know that. And, and I got here, be a, uh, we appropriate victory through faith. That's how victory comes. Victory comes through faith. It says it right there. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Are you born of God? Did it take faith to be born of God? Sure it did. And so that, in that alone, you are victorious. You're victorious. We are saved by faith and we walk by faith. You know, it's a faith walk. And uh, grace saves us and grace helps us to walk and be sanctified in, in God's uh, wonderful Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus Christ is the object of our faith. So we cannot go wrong. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, He's Almighty God. We cannot go wrong. So be encouraged that your faith is solid as a rock. All right, because Jesus Christ is the object of our faith. He gives us victory since he has overcome the world. He said in, uh, in the book of John that uh, be of good cheer. So rejoice. Be of good cheer. Be happy. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. And that was before he even went to the cross, right? It was a done deal. That was the plan from before the foundation of the world. In Romans 8.37, it says, we are more than conquerors. And, uh, you know, if you're a Christian, you are already victorious. You're already victorious. It, it's, it's part of your name. You're a victor. The Greek word for victory is Nike. Or, you know, I, for years I thought Nike was like a Japanese word, you know, the swoosh. And uh, I'm thinking it was a Japanese word because Jap Japan was, a, you know, uh, they were making and producing all kinds of stuff back in the 60s and 70s. And I just thought it was a Japanese company. Well, 
then I find out that nike, it means victory. It means victory. And then the verb is nikao. It's usually translated overcome in the New Testament. More than conquerors could be translated super victors or super conquerors. Super victors or super overcomers, I should say. Overcomers. So we have overcome. That word overcome means victorious. We're victorious. Now, something so important here about faith and about our faith walk is that it glorifies God. Jesus loves to act upon our faith because it brings him glory. In Romans uh, 4.20, let me slip away and get my Bible here. I'm back because I don't have this memorized. I should have memorized it. In Romans 4.20, talking about Abraham. He says, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Romans 4.20. We could put our full trust in Christ without having any other evidence other than his word. That is sufficient for us. That is sufficient. I got a little story here from Chuck Smith. He wrote a book called Faith, and uh, so I just thought this was a good story. And uh, you can read it to your Connect group if you, if you think it's worthwhile. And uh, he says, years ago, while pastoring a small church, I wasn't able to support the family, so I took a job with Alpha Beta Markets. One day, we received a call that my mother-in-law had died in Phoenix. So I made arrangements with Alpha Beta for a short leave of absence to get all the affairs in order after her death. When I got back, I went to check the schedule to see when I worked. The manager saw me and said, Chuck, before you can work, you have to check with the union. You're late on your dues and you've been assessed a $50 fine. But I don't have $50, I replied. Well, then you can't go back to work. I can't pay the fine unless I'm working, I answered. Well, that's your problem, he retorted. They had absolutely no sympathy for my situation. I couldn't work for some time, and as a result, we found ourselves slipping deeper into debt. The situation discouraged me considerably. And about this time, Alpha Beta Markets made me an offer with a very attractive salary with only one requirement. I had to leave the ministry and make it my career. I was very tempted because I was frustrated and confused and thought, maybe I should forget the ministry. I'm just not making it, and the church isn't growing. We're in debt and going deeper every day. Now, the next morning, the phone rang. It was an old friend of the family calling to let us know that they were sending a check for $425, special overnight delivery. I just totaled up my bills that morning, $416. Overjoyed, I praised God, rejoicing in his provision. Lord, you're so good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I grabbed Kay and swung her around. We're out of debt. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But about a half hour later, when I'd settled down, the Lord spoke to my heart. Why are you so happy? Oh, Lord, I said, you're too much. You're just so good to me. Now, once more, he said, how do you know they're going to send that money? Lord, you got to be kidding, I thought. What do you mean? These are good people. I've known them for a long time. I would trust their word any day. This morning, he said, when you felt discouraged, complaining and griping to me as you totaled up your bills, you already had my promise that I'd supply all your needs. But you didn't rejoice or waltz K around the kitchen then. Now you're ecstatic because a man says a check is on his way. Whose word is greater? <laughs> An epiphany. <laughs> well, how many times have you staggered at God's promise before we, you know, put the kibosh on, on Chuck Smith, you know? Instead of stumbling and staggering, go to the Word of God. Find a promise that relates to your situation. Read that promise, meditate on it, and then stand on it. Thank the Lord and praise Him for what He's shown you through His Word before it comes to pass. This brings Him glory. That's a great story, isn't it? You know, Abraham in, in Romans there, he believed God. He did not stagger at God's promise. 
it was against all odds. You all know the story of Abraham. You know, he's 100 years old. He's, he's getting up there, and, you know, he, his wife was, was 90, and, uh, you know, they'd been given this promise many years early, and they tried to work it out you know, through human means, and uh, that didn't work out, and we're still kind of uh, got the fruit from that today. You know? And uh, so, so Abraham uh, believes God. You know, he believes God, and, you know, they had the son of promise, Isaac, the son of promise. He did not stagger at what God promised him, and it took him a long time, and he overcame all kinds of odds. I'm telling you, I know a little bit about what, what's going on there, you know. I'm 61 now, and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not that 20-year-old that I used to be. You know, I just I can't do the things I did at 20 years old. I got another illustration here for you. Swimming pool illustration. Your daddy is standing in a swimming pool out a little bit from the edge. You are, uh, let's see, three years old, standing on the edge of the pool. Daddy holds out his arms to you and says, jump, I'll catch you, I promise. Now, how do you make your daddy look good at that moment? The answer is you trust him and you jump. You have faith in him and you jump. That makes him look strong and wise and loving. But if you won't jump, if you shake your head and run away from the edge, you make your daddy look bad. It looks like you're saying, he can't catch me. In other words, he's incompetent. Or, he won't catch me. In other words, he's mean. Or, it's not a good idea to do what he tells me to do. In other words, he's unwise. And all three of those make your dad look bad. But you don't want to make God look bad, so you trust him. And then you make him look good, which he really is. And that is what we mean when we say faith glorifies God, or faith gives God glory. It makes him look good as he really is. That's from John Piper. So two little illustrations there. Uh, just uh, That's a simple one. It's for children. I'm a child. Uh, you know, I kind of related to that one better than I did the the first one, you know, and uh, let's, let's just believe God. Let's believe God. It gives him glory. Amen. Jesus consistently taught that faith is key to victory. Faith is key to victory. Now I got some quotes from Jesus. Be it to you according to your faith. That's Matthew 9, 29. And then Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Pray believing and you will receive. In Matthew 17, 20, he says, uh, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. And then in John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus said, Without me, you can do nothing. And so I usually look at the positive side of that. With him, we could do anything, right? All things are possible with God. So Jesus teaches us that faith brings us victory. So I got here in uh, Roman numeral three, let's glorify God by exhibiting bold faith. Are you ready to believe for the impossible. Are you ready to believe for the impossible? I read this in uh, Stephen Furtick's book, Sun Stand Still. Anybody read this book? It, it's a faith builder, okay? If you haven't got it, I think it's in the bookstore. And uh, it's a good one. It's an easy read. It's a fast read. It's a good read. Uh, he says, the size of your vision isn't determined by who God is. I read that and I went, hmm, hmm. I said, I better read a little further. He says, your vision will be sized by who you believe God is. So how big is your God? How big is your God? What do you believe in God for? What do you believe in God for in your life, in your connect group, in your family, for your future, financially, where you'll live? You know, uh, your retirement or whatever. Uh, how big is your God? You know, we saw 
a couple times here at Cornerstone, we've shown the How Great Is Our God video. And, uh, you know, Louis Giglio does this great presentation, and they take, he takes you through the Hubble telescope to these, to the largest star in, known in the universe. And I think somebody was telling me today that uh, if you took a 747 at 600 miles an hour and you took one trip around that star, it would take you like a thousand years. It's big. It's big. It's a big star. If you put our sun next to that star, it looks like the head of a pin compared to a, a, a great big huge dome. You know, it's, it's just massive. And God created that. And he's bigger than that. And that's one of billions and trillions of stars in the universe. And so God is very big. We can believe him for big things. The size of your vision isn't determined by who God is. It's sized by who you believe God is. Stephen Furtick says, if you want to experience God's blessings, Audacious faith is not optional. It's not optional. It's not an option. Anybody know what audacious means? Anybody know? Outrageous. Yeah, it could mean uh, outrageous. It means just extraordinarily bold, uh, you know, willing to take risks, uh, you know, believing for the impossible. That's audacious. And uh, so uh, Steve, Stephen Furtick says, that's the kind of faith we got to have if we want to do great things for God. So many of us, and me included, uh, don't believe big enough. We don't believe big enough. And, uh, you know, God, I think God is pleased. You know, he's pleased when we have great faith. And Jesus said he can do all things through me. And so I, I want to encourage you to believe for big things. This is a year of victory at Cornerstone. Let's trust God for a great big things and watch him do miracles in our midst all right this is from aw tozer were we able to extract from any man a complete answer to the question what comes into your mind when you think about god we might predict with certainty the spiritual future of that man uh, you can read that over and think about that a little bit tozer was a, a deep thinker and uh, but you know who we think God is, that's going to determine what our decisions that we make, the plans we make, the risks we take, and all kinds of other things in our lives. It, it, it can really influence a lot about, about what we do in life, and, and, it, and it definitely will predict our future. Do your prayers measure up to the actual greatness of God? You know, I find, you know, we pray for a lot of people here at Cornerstone. You know, uh, every service, we're praying for people during worship now. Um, elders, as an elder, we go to hospitals and, you know, all kinds of places, homes to visit the sick and those that are having surgery and those kinds of things. And, you know, I read that and I thought, you know, sometimes you just got to have faith for these people, too. You know, their, their faith is trodden down or they've been through a tough time or something like that. And, you know, if we have great faith, we can often inspire them to, it will bolster their faith too. And so I think it's a responsibility of a Christian brother or sister to lift up others and, and, and strengthen them by believing when they can't. Sometimes it's just hard to believe. Sometimes the circumstances overwhelm us. They're just, our mind is not where it should be. The devil's attacking us. And that's when it's great when we have connect groups. And they come alongside us and they lift us up and they can believe for us. And I think we need to do that for each other. We need to do that for each other. Have you activated your faith? Now faith is not a theoretical proposition or wishful thinking. It's substance. It is action. Hebrews 11.6, what's it say? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? Yeah, and so it's substance. It's something. It's just, uh, you know, like uh, when I was a, a kid and I was taking science class, you know, I was kind of 
amazed and I even doubted a little bit when they told me that uh, light was actually matter. You know, it's made up of stuff. It's a substance. It's not just, you know, you look at light and it's like you can't really touch it. You can feel it. You can see it. But, you know, beside the heat that comes from it or something, or you, or you see that you glow from, from uh, light. It, you, but it's made up of photons and these other particles. And I, I was kind of like, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. And then I found out that sound, you know, is also like a substance. And there's waves that go out. And, you know, you know a lot of things that we don't see have substance. You know, we don't see uh, the principalities and the powers and the rulers, you know, of darkness, the angels, but God says he created them. He created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. They're real. They're substance. And uh, they have a great effect on what happens in, on this planet. And so uh, faith, even though it's kind of abstract, it's a substance. And uh, we need to uh, put it into action and scriptural faith will bring us victory. Scriptural faith will bring us victory. Yes, Bill? I'm sorry? It's 11-1. Yeah, I thought I said that. You said 11-6. That's what's written down. Okay, well, 11 6 is without faith it's impossible to please God, right? Yeah, that's a, that is a typo. You can correct it. 11 1. 1 through 6. That's pretty good. I wasn't even looking at my notes. I just said it, you know. <laughs> Hebrews 11.1. 1. That whole chapter 11 is about faith, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, num uh, numeral 4, Roman numeral 4, guidelines. <laughs> Got some guidelines here. I uh, don't want to just give you uh, the theology and scriptural principles. We'll give you some some meat and potatoes here to just be able to put it into action. This is also taken from Furtick's book, Sun Stand Still. And uh, so I've got 10 things here for, for you to, uh, to help you put your faith into action and to, to pray faith-filled prayers. Five truths about Sun Stand Still prayers. Now, Sun Stand Still, uh, it's out of the book of Joshua, right? It's out of the book of Joshua. And uh, they were going after, I believe it was the Amorites, and they, they, Joshua wanted to utterly destroy them. And darkness was approaching. And I think in Joshua's mind, he thought, I need some more daylight so I can chase them down. They won't get away, you know, in the darkness and escape, and we'll have to wait till morning, and who knows where they'll be. And so he prayed this prayer, and he asked the Lord to basically to halt the sun, you know. And, uh, and so it was a, it, to that, up to that time, in Joshua's day and anyone before that, nobody had ever seen the day take more than 24 hours, right? Days were 24 hours, or 12 hours of darkness, 12 hours of light, and that's the way it is. But he prayed this audacious prayer and asked the Lord to do something that was impossible, humanly impossible. And so, and then the Bible says that God delayed the day. It almost was like two days instead of one. And to, you know, I've, I've did a lot of research on that, looking to see uh, there's all kinds of stuff out there about what actually happened on that day, you know. And then you got all the scientific people said it's impossible, blah, 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 all this, all these things could happen. I always believe the scriptures. I might not understand exactly how it came to pass, but God did bring it to pass. And one day, maybe we can ask Joshua when we see him. I'll ask Joshua, what happened that day? I want to ask God. <laughs> ask God, yeah. Well, he might be too busy. No, he won't. <laughs> All right, so five truths about sun stand still prayers. A sun stand still prayer is audacious. We already mentioned this. It addresses a goal or need that's far beyond your ability to meet it. It should not be outside your personal faith capacity. And it should be so big that you could never achieve it on your own, but not bigger than your ability to believe that God can do it. That should be that. Believe that God can do it. The second thing is a, a sun standstill prayer is specific. 
The more specific, the better. I've got a, an example here. I'm believing God to provide the total cost for my mission trip. You know, it doesn't have to be elaborate, right? A simple one-sentence prayer, very effective, yet specific, okay? And, uh, and you ought to write it down. You ought to write it down. Put a date on it. Commit to that prayer. Commit to praying it regularly with faith, believing. And then when God answers, also write that down with the date and how he answered it. And then later on, you can celebrate that. You write, write it in your journal. You can write it however you want to do it. Write it in your Bible. Write it down. Number three, a sun stands still prayer doesn't have to be permanent. It doesn't have to be a permanent prayer. In fact, you know, God's going to answer that prayer. We're believing, right? God's going to answer that prayer. And so, but you know, sometimes it took God 25 years to fulfill his promise to Abraham. So it could take some time. It might take one minute, one second, one month. We don't know. But the point is you keep believing and keep praying until God answers the prayer. Regardless of how long it takes him to answer, keep praying and standing in faith. A sun stand still prayer may be too personal to share with others. Um, I got here certain issues and deep personal needs may be kept between you and God. Sometimes it's just, you know, you just can't share certain things. Okay? That's all right. Yeah. Just keep it between you and God. You can always ask others to pray for a personal matter. You know, they don't know exactly what they're praying, but that's okay. You're still garnering support for your prayer. And then a sun stand still prayer thrives with a team. It thrives with a team. Prayer partners can encourage you when your faith falters. We've already mentioned this earlier, but uh, you know, it is so important to have prayer partners. We have a whole ministry here in the church that prays weekly, da daily, and every week they're given a new list of prayer requests <coughs> that are brought, and uh, we see things at God answering prayers all the time through that ministry. The power of corporate prayer is logarithmic. It's exponential. It says one will put a thousand to flight and two, ten thousand, right? Uh -huh. So it's exponential. And your connect group could be your prayer team. This is what it's all about. I hope you're praying with your connect group. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, Melissa says that uh, her connect group is still texting, emailing uh, one another like we were doing, uh, you know, just a, a couple months ago. And so they never stopped that. And so it just stuck with them. And yeah, Jen. Yeah. So that's great. Do that, you know. Take advantage of these devices that we have, you know. <laughs> Take advantage of these electronic gadgets that we've got. <laughs> and and the, uh, then five steps, five steps to a sun stand still prayer. We'll just go through these quickly. Activate your audacious faith. All right, so reject passivity and fear. God's not pleased with that. He doesn't like lukewarm stuff. He doesn't want you. You know, you got to do some stuff. All right, you can do all you can do and then rely on God to do what he can do. All right, um, seize the initiative because you know who God is. He's good, he's strong, and he is for you. All right, remember that your bold faith brings him glory. And we're commanded to be courageous and strong. Uh, Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. You know, God says, I, I'm commanding you. To be strong and courageous. So that's, that's a strong word. Uh, and then number two, approach God with boldness. Uh, Hebrews 4.16 says, let us therefore what? You, we come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to he help in our time of need. And uh, you know, that was a revolutionary thought. Because the Hebrews, the Jews, you know, they had to stay. But they wouldn't even say the name of God. They had such a deep reverence and awe for God. Uh, Sinai, they couldn't come up and touch the mountain lest they die. 
And so God was kind of off limits to most everybody. You know, the high priest could only go into the, to the, most holy, the Holy of Holies once per year and then under strict guidelines. And uh, uh, so, but Jesus tore the veil and he opened up the way to God. We're all priests now where we can come into the throne room of God and ask, we can come boldly with confidence, knowing that like the high priest, you know, if, if he didn't do it right, they, the, the tradition has it that they tied a rope to his leg and if he, if he didn't do it right, he'd be struck dead inside there and they'd drag him out with a rope because nobody else wanted to go in there because they'd die. But today it's totally different because of what Jesus did for us. The throne room is open. The Holy of Holies is open to us. We can come boldly, washed by the blood of Jesus. 1 John 4, or 5, 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. Number three, ask specifically for what is humanly impossible. See things from God's perspective. That's hard. That's hard. You know, we can't do that all the time. You know, we, we're human beings. But try to see the things that God sees. If we sang that song tonight. Give me vision to see things like you do. All right? And we can look to God and He can give us vision. Luke one thirty seven says, Nothing is impossible with God. And Mark 9.23, Everything is possible for him who believes. And then number four, advance toward the answer. Do all you can that it's humanly possible to bring about the answer. Work hard and stick with it and keep praying. So we're believing by faith, yet we're still working and doing everything we can to bring about the promise or bring about the answer to the prayer. Everything that we can do. In other words, you know, if you, let's just say uh, alcohol problem. Oh, Lord, deliver me from this uh, addiction to booze. And then uh, you walk into the bar every day. Eh, that's not, you know, you do what's humanly possible. And no, I'm not going in there. I'm going the other way. You know what I mean? It's a pretty simple suggestion. But sometimes we need to do the simple things, right? Uh, and then number... Five, give God all the glory. Celebrate your victories with others. Give credit, honor, and thanks to God. It's always about Jesus. It's never about me. Hello. And then uh, uh, Isaiah 25, 1. That's a great verse. Oh, Lord, I'll honor and praise your name, for you are my God. You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago, and now you have accomplished them. So our conclusion would be to let's all be victorious in 2015 by activating our faith and praying bold prayers. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So there's a lot there for you. Uh, you can use what you want. You can leave out what you want. Just teach the lesson to the best of your ability. Right? I hope it uh, blesses you and, and your group. And uh, let's, let's, just, uh, let's just stoke our faith this year. Any questions? Any questions? There was only, was only two times that Jesus said somebody had great faith. Two times Jesus said somebody had great faith. The centurion, he marveled, right, at that faith. Yep. Yeah. And then with the woman who had the daughter that was right. besieged by the devil, and she refused to leave, she said, even, even the little daughter. Yes, the crumbs from the table. Yeah. Believe even yeah. for the outrageous. Believe for the outrageous, Fred says. I agree. Well, God bless you. Have a great night. And uh, have a great month of uh, April in your connect groups.